our minds are memories. Connected. And man and machine become one. Pacific Rim Uprising hit theaters with all its monstrous glory about six years ago. The movie amps up the excitement from the first film, leaving us all eagerly anticipating what's next. And with that cliffhanger ending, it's got us wondering, will there be a third installment? With the second installment raking in the dough at the box office, it's pretty much a done deal. So what should we expect from this next chapter? Well, let's take a look at what worked in the Pacific Rim Uprising for some inspiration. Also, stick around till the end, as at the end we'll discuss why Guillermo del Toro didn't direct Pacific Rim 2 and what Toro has to say about the surprising reason he did. Newt's Descent, The Continuing Madness Picture this. Dr. Newt Geisler, played by the ever-talented Charlie Day, caught right in the middle of a mind-bending showdown. Throughout Pacific Rim Uprising, we watched as Newt's sanity took a nosedive thanks to a pesky precursor presence squatting in his brain. He's doing all sorts of crazy stuff, from jeopardizing humanity's defenses to almost throttling his buddy Dr. Gottlieb. And let's not forget those snazzy suits he's suddenly rocking. Now, as the credits roll, it's clear the precursors have a tight grip on Newt's psyche. So what's next? Well, how about a showdown between good old Newt and the dark, precursor-influenced version of himself? With Day's stellar performance laying the groundwork, it's prime time for an epic face-off in the next Pacific Rim flick. Get ready for some serious mind games and one final battle for control. Humanity's last stand, the battle against the precursors. It's shaping up to be one heck of a showdown between humanity and those sneaky precursors. With John Boyega's Jake Pentecost rallying the troops for a full-scale invasion through the breach, get ready for some serious action. The Pan-Pacific Defense Corps is gearing up to take the fight straight to the aliens who've been causing all the trouble. And guess what? As Jake and his crew venture into the heart of enemy territory, we might finally get a peek at what lies beyond the breach. But hold on to your seats, because it's not just a one-way trip. Those crafty precursors might just decide to crash the party on our turf, unleashing chaos in an epic two-front battle. Reunion at the Brink The Comeback of Pacific Rim Legends While there were cameos from several other members of the Pacific Rim cast in its follow-up, everything from scheduling conflicts to the trimming of a bloated script lead to only three characters returning from Guillermo del Toro's Foundation film. But as the stakes of this hypothetical third Pacific Rim film should be raising, so should the profile of old friends like Rally Beckett, Tendo Choi, and Hannibal Chow. Better still is the fact that the actors behind all three characters seem more than willing to return into the fray. All that needs to happen is the crafting of a good reason for their return. Expanding the Jagger Program for Humanity's Defense now, some serious Jagger action, because if the sequel to Pacific Rim Uprising is anything to go by, we're going to need more of those giant robots and pilots to operate them. We've already seen some new Jaggers strutting their stuff in the latest movie, along with a bunch of fresh-faced recruits training to join the PPDC's elite ranks. Now, if Jake Pentecost and his protege Amari Namani want to bring the fight to the Kaiju once and for all, they're going to need a whole new squad of skilled pilots ready to link up and take down any monster that dares to step into our world. And you know what that means. Yep, you guessed it, more Jaggers. With each new Jagger comes a whole bunch of exciting attacks and tactics for the team behind the next Pacific Rim adventure to dream up. Unlikely allies, the emergence of Kaiju comrades. Just like in those old Godzilla movies, it's kinda crazy to think that what used to be our enemies might actually end up being our buddies. I mean, not all of those giant monsters working for the Precursors are totally on board with their plan, you know? So the ones who'd rather hang out with us than wreck stuff could be a sign that maybe humans and Kaiju can team up one day. And hey, they'd be super helpful in fighting against those Precursors. Plus, imagine how cool it'd be to see a Jagger pilot teaming up with a real-life Kaiju, charging into battle together. The ultimate showdown, Pacific Rim meets the Monsterverse. We all want it, right? Guillermo del Toro's probably dreaming about it too. Ever since the MonsterVerse with Godzilla and Kong became such a smash hit, 
Fans have been buzzing about a crossover with Pacific Rim. Director Stephen S. DeKnight thinks it should happen after a third Pacific Rim movie, but hey, why not give us a taste sooner? Imagine this. The war against the precursors is won. We've got friendly kaiju and everything's peaceful. Then, out of nowhere, a portal opens up and in stroll Godzilla, King Kong, and all their monster buddies from the MonsterVerse. Mike Reyes, the senior movie contributor at Cinema Blend, though he doesn't take titles too seriously. He's been passionate about entertainment since he was a kid, and movies have always been a huge part of his life, which is why he ended up in this awesome job. Mike studied political science at Drew University, but decided against running for office a while back. His knowledge spans from James Bond to all things Alita, giving him a wonderfully diverse resume. He's all about fighting for the user and bringing the best movie news and insights to the audience. Now, let's find out what Guillermo del Toro has to say about the surprising reason he didn't direct Pacific Rim 2. Del Toro, the director of Pacific Rim, has revealed an unexpected reason why he didn't end up directing Pacific Rim 2, a missed deposit. In an interview with Collider, he explained that he was all set to helm Pacific Rim Uprising until production shifted to China. Del Toro mentioned, we were getting ready to do it. It was different from the first, but it had a continuation of many of the things that I was trying to do. However, a crucial deposit for the stages in Toronto had to be made by 5 p.m. or they would lose the stages for several months. Despite Del Toro's reminders, the deposit wasn't paid in time and they lost the opportunity to use the stages. After losing the stages in Toronto, the production of Pacific Rim 2 shifted to China, but without Guillermo Del Toro. He recalled the moment they suggested filming in China, saying, They said, well, we can shoot it in China, and I go, what do you mean we? I've got to go do Shape of Water. Del Toro had to pass on the sequel because he was already committed to making The Shape of Water, which ended up winning Best Picture at the Academy Awards in 2017. Meanwhile, Pacific Rim 2 didn't quite live up to expectations. Del Toro had previously shared some intriguing details about his version of the sequel, which would have featured time-traveling Jaggers and a tech-savvy villain connected to the precursors. He explained, The villain was this tech guy that had invented basically sort of the Internet 2.0. Del Toro revealed that the precursors, who controlled the kaiju, turned out to be humans from the distant future, attempting to terraform Earth to survive. Most reviews of Pacific Rim Uprising gave it an above-average rating, calling it a loyal but unremarkable successor to the original. While the battles between kaijus and jaggers still provided some thrills, the sequel lacked the depth and development to fully explore its post-apocalyptic future. Well, that's it for today. What's your favorite moment from the Pacific Rim movies, and what would you like to see in a potential third installment? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss out on our latest content. Until next time, stay tuned and keep enjoying those epic kaiju battles.